Adam! Hi, hi here. Get down. I'm so sorry. Shh, woman. Where are you? I'm here. I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid because, you know, I'm naked. Who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree? It was the woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit and I ate it. Yes, but there's a serpent. He deceived me. Oh no. What have you done? So this is how we lost our precious Eden. Our paradise. But God is merciful. And he governs over all things. So he made our father, Adam, live at the western border of the garden. Because there the earth was very broad. And God commanded Adam to live there, in a cave, inside of a rock. And so it was called, the Cave of Treasures. But when our father, Adam, and Eve, first went out of the garden, and first saw the broad earth spread before them, they feared and trembled, and fainted, and they were as dead. You see, until this time, they had been in the garden, which was beautifully planted with all manners of trees. But now they saw themselves in this strange land, which they knew nothing of. They had never seen it. This is why God had pity on them. And when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden, he sent his word to our father Adam and our mother Eve. God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and you and your descendants will live and walk in them until the days and years are fulfilled. I will send the word that created you. Yes, the word will again save you when the five and a half days are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God, and of the great five and a half days, he did not understand. You see, Adam was thinking there would only be five and a half days for him until the end of the world. So Adam cried and asked God to explain it to him. Then the Creator, in his mercy, explained to Adam that these were five thousand and five hundred years, and how the One would then come and save him and his descendants. You see, Adam was still by the gate of the garden, and he saw this cherub with a sword of flashing fire in his hand. So they fell on their faces once again, trembling with fear. But the angel had pity on them, and after turning away from them, he went up to heaven and prayed to the Creator, saying, Lord, you sent me to watch at the gate of the garden, but when your servants, Adam and Eve, saw me, they were terrified, and they fell on their faces, and they are as dead. Oh my Lord, what should we do to your servants? Then God had pity on them, and he showed them mercy. So God sent his angel back to the garden, and then the word of the Lord came to Adam and Eve, which raised them up once again. The Lord said to Adam, Strengthen your heart. I told you that at the end of the five and a half days, I will send my word to save you. So when Adam heard this word from God, he was comforted, because God had reassured Adam and Eve how he would save them. But Adam and Eve still cried for having come out of the garden. It was their first home. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh, it was now altered. So he cried bitterly. And as they walked gently down into the cave of treasures, Adam cried over himself and said to Eve, Look at this cave. This is a prison in this world. What is this compared to the garden? Look at your eyes and at mine. We can't see like we did. Our eyes have become flesh. Adam said again to Eve, What is our body today compared to what it was in the former days? You see, Adam did not want to enter this cave. But he bowed to God's order and said to himself, But unless I enter this cave, I shall again be a transgressor. Then Adam and Eve entered the cave and stood praying in their own tongue, unknown to us. And as they prayed, Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock that covered them overhead. This prevented him from seeing either heaven or God's creatures. So he cried and beat his chest hard until he dropped and was as dead. So Eve sat there crying because she truly believed Adam was dead. So then she got up. She said, Oh God, please forgive me. I'm the one who caused Adam to fall. Don't take him away from me. I couldn't stand being alone in this world. 
Lord, please bring him back to life. Please give him life so I won't be alone in this strange land. And if not, then take me, kill me so I can be like him. Then Eve cried bitterly, and she fell on her father Adam for her great sorrow. So God decided to raise them up and comfort them. And the Lord said to Adam and Eve, You transgressed of your own free will. Through this desire of divinity, greatness, because of this I deprived you of your bright nature which you once were. And I made you come out of this garden into this land, rough and full of trouble. If only you had not transgressed my commandment, and kept my law, and not eaten of the fruit I told you not to eat of. There were fruit trees in that garden way better than that one. But the wicked Satan did not keep his faith, and had no good intent towards me. And even though I created him, he considered me to be useless, and sought the Godhead for himself. For this, I hurled him down from heaven, so he could not remain in his first estate. It was he who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes until you ate of it by believing his word. Because of this you have transgressed my commandments, and therefore I have brought onto you all of these sorrows. For I am God, the Creator, who when I created my creatures I did not intend to destroy them. But after they had sorely roused my anger, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary, they still continue hardened in their transgressions, they shall be under a curse forever. When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they cried and sobbed even more. But they were strengthened in their hearts, because they now felt that God was like a father and a mother, and for this very reason, they cried before him. Then God had pity on them, and said, O oh Adam, I have made my covenant with you and I will not turn from it, but I can't let you return into the garden, not until my covenant of the great five and a half days is fulfilled. Then Adam said to God, O oh Lord, you created us, you made us fit to be in the garden, and before I transgressed, you made all beasts come to me, that I should name them. Your grace was then on me, but now that I have transgressed your commandments, O oh Lord God, all beasts will rise against me and devour me, and Eve, your handmaid, they will cut off our life from the face of the earth. Therefore I beg of you, O oh God, that since you have made us come out of the garden and made us be in this strange land, please don't let these beasts hurt us. So when God heard these words from Adam, he had pity on him and felt that he was truly afraid of the beasts rising up against Adam and Eve. After all, the Lord was angry with the two of them on account of their transgressions. So then God commanded the beasts and the birds and all that moves on the earth to come to Adam and to be familiar with him and not to trouble him and Eve or any of the good and righteous among their offspring. Then all the beasts paid homage to Adam according to the commandment of God, except the serpent against which God was angry. It did not come to Adam. Then Adam cried and said, O oh God, when we lived in the garden, we saw the angels that praised in heaven. But now we can't see like we used to. And when we entered this cave, all creation became hidden from us. Then God the Lord said to Adam, When you were under subjection to me, you had a bright nature within you. And for that reason, you could see things far, far away. But after your transgression, your bright nature was withdrawn from you. Now you cannot see things that are far away but only things that are near. This is the limitations of the flesh. It is indeed brutish. When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they went their way, praising and worshiping him with a sorrowful heart. Then Adam and Eve came out of the cave of treasures and went near to the garden gate. They stood there to just look at it and quickly started crying. So Adam and Eve started to walk around the gate of the garden. When they got to the southern side of it, they found this water that watered the garden. It came from the tree of life, which split into four rivers all over the earth. Then they came and went near to that water and looked at it, and saw that it came from under the roots of the tree of life in the garden. So when Adam saw this, he cried and wailed and beat his chest because he was severed from the garden. And he said to Eve, 
Why have you brought this on me and on yourself and on our descendants? Why have you brought so many of these plagues and punishments? What? What did you see to make you so mad at Do me? Do you not see this water that was once with us in the garden? That watered the trees of the garden and flowed out from here? And we, when we were in the garden, we didn't even care about it. But now, since we are in this strange land, we now turn to this for the use of our bodies. But when Eve heard these words from him, she cried. And from the soreness of their crying, they fell into the water. You see, Adam and Eve here tried to kill themselves so they could never again return to behold creation again. Because when they looked at it, all the works of creation, they felt too sad and depressed to keep living. Then God, merciful and gracious, looked at them, lying in that water, very close to death. And he sent an angel who brought them out of the water and laid them on the seashore. But they were as dead. Then the angel went up to God and said, Oh God, your creatures have breathed their last. Then God sent his word to Adam and Eve, who raised them from their death. And Adam said, Oh God, while we were still in the garden, we did not require or care for this water. But since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, While you were under my command and were a bright angel, you knew not of this water. But now that you have transgressed my commandments, you cannot do without water. You need it to wash your body and to make it grow, because now your body is like that of beasts and is in need of water. When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they cried a bitter cry, and Adam entreated God to let him return into the garden, just to look at it a second time. But God said to Adam, I have made you a promise. When that promise is fulfilled, I will bring you back into the garden, you and your righteous descendants. Then God ceased to commune with Adam. Soon after, Adam and Eve felt themselves burning with thirst and heat and sorrow. But Adam said to Eve, let's not drink of this water, even if we are to die. Because as soon as this water touches our insides, it'll only increase our punishment. So both Adam and Eve then went away from the water and drank none of it at all. They then returned to the Cave of Treasures. But when Adam realized that he couldn't actually see Eve and could only hear the noises she was making, Adam then cried in this deep, painful groan before getting up and saying, Eve, where are you? So she said to him, I'm here. I'm just standing in this dark. Remember when we were in the garden? We didn't even know what night or day was. Remember, Eve, the garden land and its radiating brightness. Now all the pleasures of this life has come to an end. Then Adam beat his chest, and both he and Eve mourned for the whole night until the very crack of dawn. Then Adam stood up in the cave and said, Oh God, why did this light leave us? What even is this darkness that covers us? We can't even see each other. When we were in the garden, we never saw or even knew what darkness was. I wasn't hidden from Eve and she wasn't hidden from me. But now, since we came into this cave, Darkness has covered us, and it separated us from each other. Oh Lord, why do you turn us into this darkness? When God heard Adam's voice, he said to him, Oh Adam, you know, I once had this good angel, and my bright light rested on him and his hosts. But one day this angel transgressed my commandments, so I deprived him of that bright nature, and he became darkness itself. See. When he was in the heavens, in the realms of light, he knew nothing of darkness, but he transgressed. And I made him fall from the heavens onto the earth, and it was this same darkness that consumed him. But on you, O oh Adam, while you were still in my garden and obedient to me, that bright light rested on you too. But when I heard of your transgressions, I deprived you of that bright light. But I did not turn you into darkness. I made for you a body of flesh which can bear heat and cold. If I had let my wrath fall on you heavily, I would have destroyed you. And if I had turned you into darkness, it would have been as if I had killed you. But in my mercy, I have made you as you are, even after transgressing my commandment. O oh, Adam, I kicked you out of the garden, 
and commanded you to live here in this cave. But Adam, the night has deceived you. This darkness will not last forever, only twelve hours. Each day, when it is over, daylight will return. So therefore, do not be afraid, and don't say in your heart that I plague you with this darkness. Strengthen your heart, this is not a punishment. O oh, Adam, I have made the day so that you and your descendants can work in it, and I have made the night so that they can rest in it. But little darkness remains now, Adam. Take comfort, because daylight will soon return. Then Adam said to God, O oh Lord, please just take my soul. Don't let me see this gloom anymore. I beg you, take me to some place where there is no darkness. But God the Lord said to Adam, I promise you, my son, this darkness will pass from you. I have determined every day for you until the fulfillment of my covenant, when I will save you and bring you back into the garden, into the house of light, where there is no darkness, in the kingdom of heaven. Again, God said to Adam, All this misery you have brought on yourself will not save you from the hand of Satan, though, but I will. When I come down from heaven and become flesh of your descendants, I will take onto myself all of your sins, and the darkness that covered you in this cave shall cover me in the grave, once I am in the flesh of your descendants. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to time, and I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of man, in order to save you. And so God ceased to commune with Adam. Then Adam and Eve cried because of God's words to them. They lamented over the fact that they would not be able to return to the garden until the fulfillment of these days. But they cried mostly for God, who had told them that he would now suffer for their salvation. After this, Adam and Eve continued to stand in the cave, praying and crying, until the morning dawned on them. And when they saw that the light had returned to them, they regained their courage and strengthened their hearts. Then Adam began to come out of the cave. But when he came to the very entrance and turned his face towards the east, and saw the sunrise in glowing rays, and felt its radiating heat. He was afraid of it. He was terrified. He thought to himself that this flame was there to plague him. He cried to himself and fell to the ground. Oh Lord, please don't plague me, and don't take my life away from this earth. Right in this moment, Adam actually thought that the sun was God. Because while he was in the garden, Adam could never actually see the sun and neither could he feel its flaming heat. Therefore, Adam was terrified of the sun. He thought God meant to burn him for all the days that he had decreed for him. Adam even thought to himself, if God did not plague us with darkness, then he must have made the sun to plague us with burning heat. But while he was panicking, the word of God came to him and said, Oh Adam, get up on your feet. The sun is not God. It has only been created to give light by day. I told you, each morning the light will return. Adam and Eve came out of the cave and went towards the garden. But as they went near it, before the western gate, where Satan came and deceived them, they found the same serpent just lying at the gate, pitifully licking the dust and wiggling on the ground. And where before this serpent was the most exalted of all beasts, now it was changed and it became slippery. It had even become venomous, all because of God's curse. When this cursed serpent saw Adam and Eve, it swelled its head, stood on its tail, and with its eyes blood red, acted like he would kill them. It went straight after Eve, and while Adam was standing by, he cried because he had no idea how to even put this thing to death. So with a burning heart for Eve, Adam approached the serpent and held it by the tail. It then turned towards him and said, Oh, Adam, because of you and Eve, I am slippery, and I now go on my belly. Then with its great strength, it threw down Adam and Eve and squeezed them, and it tried to kill them. But then God quickly sent an angel who threw the serpent away from them and raised them up. Then the word of God came to the serpent and said, The first time I made you slick, I made you go on your belly. But I did not deprive you of speech. This time, you will be mute. You and your race will never speak again. My creatures were ruined because of you. And this time you try to kill them? Then the serpent was struck mute and was no longer able to speak. 
And then this mighty wind blew down from the heavens by the command of God and carried away the serpent from Adam and Eve and threw it on a seashore where it landed in India. But Adam and Eve cried before God, Oh God, I told you back in the cave that the beasts of the field would try and devour me and cut my life off from this earth. Oh Adam, not one of these beasts will be able to hurt you. I made all the beasts and all other moving things come to you in the cave. But I did not let the serpent come to you, because it might have tried to kill you way back then. I knew that the cursed one was wicked. That's why I just wouldn't let it come near you with the other beasts. But now, strengthen your hearts, and don't be afraid, because I am with you till the very end of your days. Then Adam and Eve worshipped before God and gave him thanks, and praised him for having delivered them from death. But when Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer, and how God communed with them and comforted them, Satan became jealous, and he made an apparition. In his hands was a flashing light, and around him were his hosts, surrounded by a great light. He then placed his throne right at the entrance of the cave, but he could not go any further. So Satan shed light into the cave, until the cave lit up around Adam and Eve, all while his hosts began to sing praises. You see, Satan did this so that Adam would think to himself that this was a heavenly light, and that Satan's hosts were angels. He wanted him to think that God had sent them to watch over the cave, and to give him light in the darkness. So Adam came out of the cave, and after seeing this, both Adam and Eve bowed to Satan. But trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light, and at those many songs of praise, and at all these hosts standing outside who won't come into our cave. Why don't they tell us what they want, where they're from, or what the meaning of this light is? Why won't they come in? So Adam stood up and prayed to God with a burning heart and said, O oh Lord, is there another God besides you, who created angels and filled them with light? We can see these spectacular lights. Yes, it's great indeed. They even sing loud praises. But if they are from some other god than you, then please tell me. And if they are sent by you, then tell me why you sent them. As soon as Adam said this, an angel from God instantly appeared to him in the cave. And he said to him, Adam, don't fear, but this is Satan and his hosts. He's trying to deceive you like he deceived you at first. You see, the first time he was hidden in the serpent, but this time, he has come in the appearance of an angel of light, so that you would ultimately worship him in the very presence of God. The angel then seized Satan and stripped him of all of his false light, and then revealed his true hideous form to Adam and Eve, who were now terrified once they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, He has been in this hideous form ever since God made him fall from heaven. He knew it would just freak you out. That's why he transformed himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and all of his hosts from Adam and Eve, and he said to them, Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And then the angel left them. But Adam and Eve remained standing in the cave, dumbstruck, and no consolation came to them. So once it was morning, they simply prayed and then left the cave headed for the garden. But when the crafty Satan saw them, he gathered together his hosts and came to them in a vision, again trying to deceive them. But when Adam and Eve saw him in a vision, they thought they were angels of God who had come to comfort them. So Adam spread his hands before God, begging him to make him understand what this was. So Satan, the hater of all good, said to Adam, O oh Adam, I am an angel of the great God. Look at all of these magnificent hosts that surround me. God has sent us to take care of you and to bring you to the border of the garden so I can raise you back to your former glory, so you can once again return to the garden. You see, these words sank into the heart of Adam and Eve. But God didn't say anything, because he wanted to see Adam's strength, whether he would be as easily fooled as Eve. So Satan called to Adam and Eve and said, Let's go to the sea of water. 
God commanded us to take you to the sea so I can bathe you in it and return you to your former glory. Follow me. Let's go to the sea of water. And Adam and Eve began to follow him. And once they came to this high mountain, a very high mountain, the devil drew near to Adam and Eve and started to deceive them with his little mind tricks. You see, Adam and Eve were unknowingly walking all the way to the top, and Satan wished to throw them down and kill them so he could wipe off their name from the face of the earth he so desperately wanted for himself. But when the merciful God saw how Satan wished to kill Adam with his mind tricks, God spoke to Satan in a loud voice and cursed him. Then he and his host fled, and Adam remained standing on top of the mountain, all alone. So they cried, both Adam and Eve. But then the word of God came to Adam, and it said to him, Know and understand this concerning Satan. Ever since the garden, he will now continually be seeking to deceive you and your descendants. So Adam cried before the Lord, because the reality of life after the garden was now truly sinking in. So Adam begged God to give him something from the garden, as a reminder, as a token to him, so he can at least be comforted from all of these horrors. And God considered Adam's request, and then sent the angel Michael to find golden rods to bring them to Adam. God did this so these rods of gold would shine in the night around them, and put an end to his fear of the darkness. After that, God commanded the angel Gabriel to go down to the garden and find some sweet-smelling incense so he could give it to Adam. And so Gabriel went in and found some incense. Then God commanded his angel Raphael to go down to the garden and find some myrrh to give to Adam. The angels did as God had commanded them, and they placed all these items right in front of Adam and Eve on top of that mountain where Satan tried to kill them. And when Adam saw the golden rods, the incense, and the myrrh, he rejoiced and cried, because he knew that this gold was a token of the kingdom from where he once came from. He understood that the incense was a reminder of the bright light which had been taken away from him, and that the myrrh was a token of the sorrow in which he was. And then God said, You asked me for something from the garden to be comforted with, and I have given you these three tokens as a consolation to you, so that you will trust in me and in my covenant with you. You see, I will come and save you, and kings will bring me gold, incense, and myrrh, gold as a token of my kingdom, incense as a token of my divinity, and myrrh as a token of my suffering and my death. But, O oh Adam, put these by you in the cave, the gold so it can shed light over you at night, the incense that you may smell its sweet scent, and the myrrh to comfort you in your sorrow. And when Adam heard these words from God, he worshipped him. He and Eve worshipped him and gave thanks because he had dealt with them mercifully. Then God commanded Suriel and Salathiel to bring Adam and Eve down from the mountain and take them back to the cave of treasures. And there they laid the gold on the southern side of the cave, the incense on the eastern side, and the myrrh on the western side. These three items remained by Adam in the cave of treasures. God gave these three things to Adam on the third day after he had come out of the garden, in remembrance of the three days that the Lord should remain in the heart of the earth. You see, as these three things continued with Adam and Eve in the cave, it would give them little light by the dark night, and by day these reminders of the garden would only give him little relief from this sorrow. But it did give them hope of God's promise to save them one day. So do not fear, Adam. Strengthen your heart, Eve. Because one thing is for sure, our redemption is coming. And God ceased to commune with Adam.